burn out in the gravel. Whoops. Okay, so. Alright, mic on. Time for some freaking legs. Legs once again. So, whether or not I squat today, that's. I don't know, it's kind of up in the air. I'm starting to like the idea of he the heavy squats every other lift. I'll just I'll see how I feel. But that's not going to change the beginning of the lifts, which is going to be hamstrings. Hamstring curls, laying, seated, some cable RDLs like I like. Hamstrings is going to be the same shit all the time. Just get a crazy pump. Make sure you have a lot of tension on the fucking hamstring. You know, it's not... It's nothing that complicated, you know? What? So, I just saw a TikTok about some guy talking about right, how you want to do hamstrings first. Right? This is the shit I've been saying forever. Because once you're done with hamstrings, it's not going to hinder your quad strength at all. You know? Like, sure, I might be kind of puffing and puffing after a hamstring workout, but it's not the level of fatigue that I'm going to have after quads. So... It's almost like getting hamstrings out of the way and then moving on to the intense quad workout afterwards. Obviously, you should be going you know, hard on both muscle groups, but you get what I'm saying. And then, it's honestly, heavy pressing, or especially for squats, because you know, I actually go to full depth. It just feels better with a hamstring pump. A ton of blood on the fucking knees. It almost acts a little bit like a cushion. Hard to beat. Honestly, hard to beat. If you were to just go in and do quads, or let's say for some reason I was just going to do quads today, no hamstrings, I would still want to sit on the hamstring curl for a few sets, just, you know, as a bit of a warm-up. But, you know, enough talking. Let's, uh, let's just go in there and get started. The, uh, I, I said this, I think it wasn't the last leg day. I think it was the last, uh, I don't remember, chest day maybe? Yeah, the last chest day. The, uh, so at this gym, at this Y, the weight room is connected directly to the gym. And they're doing a fucking, they're doing a Zumba class loud as fuck. Kind of, uh, kind of sucks for me. But you know what? Sometimes there's hardships in life. You just got to get over it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right, whatever, so, uh, plan for hamstrings, light-ish hamstring curls, I kind of tweaked one of them, uh, so I don't want to push it too crazy, and by tweaked, I mean, like, drill minor, but why risk it? You know, I can do a set just as hard with light weight and really squeeze at the top, rather than just throwing weight around, so I'll, I'll sit here for probably six sets. Instead of single leg, I'm just going to sit here and do standard double leg hamstring curls seated. So I'll do five sets of this. Uh, there's no point in recording them all. They're all going to look the same. So I'll, after this, we'll move on to quads. fucking know what's wrong with me. I go to the squat rack, even one plate, I can feel my fucking groin adductors just firing. I, I gotta add some adductor work into my routine. I guess they're fucking slacking. You know, one set of crazy squats shouldn't destroy your adductors like that. But instead of starting off with squats, then I'll just move straight to leg extensions. 
So whole snack, two legs at once. I've, uh, so I've talked about this before. I've had a bit of a habit of doing just this upper portion of the rep and like going, you know, really heavy. So I'm still doing work, but it's just a completely different feeling to actually take the weight all the way down to like 90, you know, have the stack almost, you know, bottom out and then fire all the way to the top, which I guess is common knowledge, but you know, for me, range of motion, it almost comes second to intensity for me. But it said for me twice, whatever, let's, uh, let's just throw this shit around. So this is set number eight. And I mean, I think I'm fucking just done now. I mean, I full, I full as full, I feel, you know, as fully pumped as, as I'm gonna get. And these sets are seriously doing some fucking damage. I'm not sure if it's just because like, maybe leg extensions are just hitting differently today, or maybe I have residual, you know, damage and inflammation from those squats that I did the last leg day, but. I haven't felt a quad pump this tight for a long time. Let's go check the damage. Oh. So, yet again, rendered to the cycling room rather than the two little yoga rooms. There's a, there's some karate classes going on. So what are you gonna do? But just standing here, without even flexing, like trying to relax my quads as much as possible, dude. They feel like stiff. Right. I don't know if you're a fucking uh, MMA fan or not. I'm not really, but fucking. I may as well have just gotten fucking spammed by leg kicks by, uh, I don't know, insert kicking, mu insert Muay Thai specialist. I don't fucking, you get the idea. They're swollen. So let's see if that uh, uh, feeling translates visually. So I can reveal them. Yeah, the lightning's kind of soft in here. But, oh, holy crap, I almost fucking fell. When you have a fucking quad pump, you kind of start to lose some definition. Purely due to the fact that, uh, you know, all these little intricate muscles and separations, once you start just filling it up with blood, I mean, that stuff goes out the window. Either way, solid pump. Like just standing here flexing. Ugh, yeah, that fucking stings. So, like they don't even want to fucking wobble around. Very nice. Uh, very good. Whew. Yeah, doing legs. Fucking hell, leg extensions with full range of motion. I've been sleeping on that like a fucking stupid idiot. So again, I mean, you know, just because somebody's big and they're talking fluently with big fancy words, explaining the reasons why they do things and working out or different like movements and training styles, 
you know, I still got a fucking shit ton of stuff to learn, right? I've made this exact analogy before. I'm probably saying the words in the exact same way too, but you're never going to have the perfect training routine, right? But you can gradually improve and approach that just by, you know, using your noggin, absorbing information and, uh, you know, repelling misinformation. You get what I'm saying? So really not much else to discuss. I'm going to go up there and sit down on the adductor machine. I think I need some more fucking adductor work in here. And uh, then we can get in the car and slam the cyclic dextrin shake. Wait, what, what the fuck? Cyclic. Oh, yeah, because I'm talking about the cycle. <laughs> the fucking cycle room. Cluster dextrin. Dude, I'm, I'm losing my mind, dude. My fucking glycogen levels are probably super low from quads. All right, so... Yeah, again, I mean, I'm not really sure if my quads were still a little bit, you know, fucked up from the last leg day with those squats, or, I mean, as, I don't know, but those leg extensions, you know, like I say, sometimes you'll feel a specific movement, like, just kill it every set on a specific day, you know, and other days, you just won't like that movement at all, right, like, some days, for biceps, I say this shit all the time, I'll just spam dumbbell curls, you know, normal alternating style for the whole lift, and that'll be it. And then other days, like, you know, yesterday's arm day, I'll do all sorts of different movements. But, oof. <laughs> I mean, I'll, the only thing I can say is that those fucking, like, ascensions killed. Getting in the car, my fucking... <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to have to raise the steering wheel from where I like it, just so I can get my fucking legs in here. That, uh... Once you start having to accommodate things around your size, uh, assuming you're, you know, large muscularly, that, in terms of bodybuilding, I mean, that's a good sign. That is a good freaking sign. So, 50 grams of cluster dextrin plus two scoops of chocolate protein. Again, not gonna, st <laughs> not gonna stop plugging it until it's over. Sam CDX, buy two get, uh, buy one get. One for buy one get one free. There we go. Get on five. I need these fucking carbs into my system. My brain is fucking operating on low energy right now. So again, if you do do the post workout, you know, cluster dextrin shake, or let's say you're not doing that, and you just have some kind of post workout shake with some carbs, or maybe like some candy or whatever, you know, you need some fucking sugar post workout. In a bulking context, a lot's gonna do you good, and in a dieting context, you know, a little's gonna do you good. Like I'd probably limit myself to more like 25 grams of the uh, the cluster dextrin when I'm dieting, just because you don't really want to eat. Or um, eat. Let's let's just say you don't want a lot of your caloric intake when you're dieting to come from liquids. What the? F Holy shit! That rabbit. There's a rabbit. It had its head turned around. It looked like a duck. It's like a fucking real life optical illusion. That was, well, whatever. So, in your in, when you if you're dieting, right? Let's say you have um you know, 150 carbs, 50 fat, and 250 protein, right? I don't know how many calories that equates to, uh, and I'm not saying that that is like the amount you should eat to diet. You gotta, you know, look up that shit online. Uh, maintenance calorie calculator, right? But let's say those are your macros and you're dieting. 150 grams of carbs, 50 fat, 250 protein. Why would you wanna drink like a fucking Gatorade intra workout? or, um, you know, a protein shake post-workout, or, uh, well, I guess those are the main things, right? Because that's, I mean, 50 grams of carbs or 50 grams of protein right there in liquid form, I mean, that's not going to fill you up at all, right? Once I start dieting, you know, I pull back on the protein shakes. I pull back on the, uh, you know, the liquid carbs because I don't want to fucking drink my calories, 
the uh, the name of the game when you're dieting is using uh, or is eating low calorie dense foods, right? If you're a, if you're a Greg Doucet fan, he's always talking about that shit. Uh, not so much now; he's more so into drama. But when he does talk about dieting, right? Low uh, low calorie dense foods. You wouldn't want to eat a bowl of ice cream if you're dieting. That's not like sure. I mean, if you're if you're craving it, then yeah, I guess you fucking you do want to eat it, but you shouldn't eat it, right? You'd be better off eating like a, you know, a couple of rice cakes, maybe some, uh, you know, sugar-free maple syrup on some kind of like, I don't, you get the idea. You're right. You wouldn't want to eat a fucking bag of Skittles when you could have that same amount of carbs as like oatmeal or something. That would be much more filling, right? So, not really sure why I started yapping about dieting. But let's uh, let's get back to the idea of uh, yeah. How about this? Let's uh, let's kind of get into the topic of individual responsibility in terms of your lifting career, right? I think there's a little bit of a I wouldn't say completely skewed mentality. But, you know, I think a lot of people, especially, you know, I see all sorts of fitness comments and shit like that, you know, they're always asking just, how do I do this? How can I do this? Like, how do I, right? Like, people just want to hear the answer said to them, even though the person saying that doesn't know, you know, the listener's exact situation or, let's say, you know, in a training context, their exact metabolism or body type and diet habits and shit like that, right? Like, with a lot of stuff, there is no one, well, apart from a few things, there are no, like, widespread, perfect methods to uh, to this whole lifting thing, right? Your best bet is going to be putting more effort into just trying to figure shit out for yourself rather than trying to have all the answers handed to you, in a sense, right? Like... When I was a early stage lifter, you know, obviously I'm going to be looking up YouTube tutorials on how to do shit, and uh, I remember I was watching a ton of, um, oh, why do I forget his name now? I, I talk about him all the time. Uh, short, blonde guy, Nip, Jeff, Jeff Nippard? Yeah, I don't know why I, I'm not confident that that's his name. But yeah, I was watching a ton of his stuff, you know, talking about training and reps and intensity and different movements and shit like that, right? Now, obviously, for the basics, you, you got to kind of be told how to do it, right? Not, it's not all completely intuitive. Like, if you took somebody random off the street who'd never been in the gym before, and you told them, like, hey, go hit chest, you know, they'd probably do it in a weird way. So, you know, in some, to an extent, you do need some basics to be um, guided through, but after maybe a year or two of that, right, it's going to be in your, you know, it's going to be better for your long-term progress to be able to figure out what works for you specifically, you know, almost by trial and error, right? I, uh, oh yeah, like I was, I was about to say, you know, my workout split in the beginning, uh, you know, I pretty much understood you want to hit every muscle group twice a week. But I was doing a fucking ton of volume. I was doing 25 sets per body part per lift. So, you know, I remember I uh, I was doing push-pull legs. So my chest day was 25 sets of chest and 25 sets of tricep push-downs. Or 25 sets of triceps. You know, I was doing all sorts of different, uh, different movements, right? Uh, and then, you know, eventually I was like, all right, is this the actual best way I'm doing it? I got to fucking figure this shit out. So, came to the uh, understanding that, yeah, that's a little bit too much volume, right? A lot of fluff work in there. It's better to train a bit more intense and, uh, what would the word be? You want your work to be intense and condensed, right? You don't want to sit in there forever and just, you know, do fluff sets where you're really not into it. You know, you end the set before you actually put in a serious amount of effort. Also, there's all sorts of little tips and tricks that everybody's talking about all the time, right? And if you were to just listen to everything that everybody says, 
then, you know, you'd have no fucking idea what to do, right? Because we've got people talking about doing, you know, training two days a week full body, uh, you know, doing an upper, lower, upper, lower, like a two-day split that just repeats. Uh, you know, there's people who are training muscles one group. Mu they're training one muscle group per week. Uh, or no, no, no. They're training each muscle group once per week, right? There's... There's power lifting, there's bodybuilding stuff, there's just general fitness, right? It's, if you just try to listen to everything everybody's saying, you're not going to have any fucking idea what to do, right? So you got to sort of limit yourself, you know, add some constraints to your training, right? And that'll sort of determine what sort of information is necessary for you to learn, right? In a bodybuilding context, let's say you want to gain muscle, right? Or get a little bit beefier, guess what? Bodybuilding training is the way to go. You don't need to be doing five by fives. You, you, know, you don't need to be doing singles or triples. You're not a fucking power lifter, right? You're trying to get some serious work done, get a crazy pump. So you got to be looking for, for people on a, or looking for people who are talking about that sort of shit, right? You know, when I started, I was watching like Callum von Moger. Uh, honestly, he was the only guy I really was watching. I, he was pretty cool, but I copied all sorts of shit from him, right? Just by watching someone who's where you want to be, you know, kind of maybe maybe not just watching, but almost like sort of studying what they're doing, how they do it, you know, because I, uh, when I was watching him, it's not like every workout video he did, you know, he was explaining every nuance to his training. Honestly, he didn't really talk about it at all, right? He just showed you what he was doing. So whether or not you guys like you know, me kind of explaining everything in a bit more detail, uh, honestly, that would, that would probably help some beginners, I guarantee. But what am I, what's the main point I'm trying to say? Like I was saying in the pose down, right? Fucking, you're better off learning things for yourself than just trying to, you know, find the answer wrote out simply in front of you. I guess that's what I'm really sort, sort of trying to say. So... I got some Chipotle earlier sitting in the fridge. Uh, six steak and cheese tacos. That's, I don't know, the bowl's just kind of fucking, eh. It's whatever. I don't know if I love the bowls. I guess maybe I'm just not even a Chipotle fan. And then I'll probably eat a variety of other foods. You know, I went to the grocery store today, got some, got a gallon of whole milk, family sized box of cinnamon toast crunch, big ass thing of apple juice. A quart of chocolate milk, um, some cream cheese for some bagels. You know, calories are calories, man. I'm trying to fuel the machine. So, cardio in the morning, and then chest tomorrow. Should be a freaky pump, like always. Oh, I almost forgot to say, see you next time.